Reviewers describe her as one with stunning clarity of memory with a poet's vision, a gritty, unforgettable voice, sparkling wit and humor, and one hell of a story. Those reviewers are talking about Mary Carr, author of three books of poetry, three memoirs, and an amazing look into how she writes memoir in The Art of Memoir. Hi, my name is Patricia Chapontier, and welcome to episode 18 of the Life Writers Vlog, where you can find inspiration and useful tips to help you write your life story. Mary Carr is unique in that she has written three memoirs. Her first is The Liars Club, written in 1995, followed by Cherry in 2001, and Lit in 2009. Each focus on a slice of her life, as memoir does. Most authors write only one memoir if they venture into the genre at all. But Mary Carr has written three so far, and who knows, there may be more to come. This session in Life Writers, we are studying the art of memoir and applying Carr's suggestions to our work. In conjunction with reading the art of memoir, I've also encouraged members to read Carr's first memoir, The Liar's Club. This book is about her growing up in Lynchville, Texas, which is in East Texas, to mismatched parents who were both volatile and loving at the same time. I really encourage you to take a look inside this book where you can see samples on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or wherever else you like to buy books, just to get a taste for the beauty of her work and the ferociousness of her writing. Chapter one opens in the middle of a moment when she was seven years old. She says in here that it took her decades to unfreeze that particular moment, that situation. As you read the sample, notice what she does to paint a picture of that instance. Look at the detail and the description she uses to bring the people, the places, the things to life in that one moment. It's not an extended scene. It's a relatively short scene, but one that is so vivid. There's a doctor involved in this. This was her family doctor, and she gives us such a clear image of him. She describes him as he wore a yellow golf shirt, unbuttoned so that sprouts of hair showed in a V shape on his chest. She goes on to say he had watery blue eyes behind thick glasses and a mustache that looked like a caterpillar. Later on, she talks about his thick fingers. She's really giving us a good look at this guy. She's doing it with concrete details, and that is the best type of description. Not loaded with adjectives and adverbs, but good concrete nouns. And that's what she has used a lot of there. Also on page one of chapter one, she talks about what she was wearing. She says it was her favorite nightgown and the pattern was of Texas blue bonnets bunched into nosegays tied with ribbon against a feel of nappy white cotton. Now that kind of of detail totally gives me an image. I know exactly what that doctor looked like and I know exactly what the nightgown she was wearing looks like. She really didn't spend a lot of time doing this. It's a matter of a couple of sentences. When you write description, you don't have to go on and on and on. I only suggest you read this book or at least 
read the opening chapter and see how it hits you. It's not an easy book to read. There are a lot of really painful things in this book, but she will teach you a great amount about being brutally honest in memoir, telling the truth, and she does it in the most beautiful and painful ways. She's an amazing, amazing writer. If you read even just the part that they've included in the sample, pay attention to how she describes people, places, and things, what she does to make them real. And after you've read the sample of chapter one, pick a person or an item, something from your own life, and describe it in where we as readers can formulate an image in our mind. Then what I'd love for you to do is share it in the comments section below. Give it your best shot, but remember, the only way to do this wrong is to not do it at all. The only way to do this wrong is to not do it at all. I look forward to seeing what you come up with, how you describe a person or a place or a thing. Until next time, happy writing, everybody. If you enjoyed this week's episode, you will love our Life Writers membership. Whether you don't know where to start writing your life stories, have started and stopped many times, or have been writing but want to receive feedback to make your stories better, the Life Writers membership is where you need to be. We have a get started roadmap, an extensive library of instructional videos, live events via Zoom, and a supportive and active community. If you want to take the stories that live in your heart and mind and put them onto the page, check out Life Writers at lifewriters.us.